Hello and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about um, authenticating your uh, workstations that are connected to the domain uh, with a uh, time-based one-time password. Um, so in this scenario I've actually configured uh, my multi-OTP and I'm just going to be demonstrating and talk a little bit uh, about how I set it up. Um, this is going to be the server as you can tell, Windows Server 2016. I have uh, one workstation connected and I'm currently attempting to log in as a test user. Um, I've already set this up so I'm just going to go ahead and demonstrate. Oh. And basically we're in. Um, what I used for this is uh, a software called Multi OTP. Um, you'll need a script. Uh, they explain the script uh, and what you need to do here. Um, this actually wasn't, uh, it, it was good information, but it was a bit hard to set up just because you need to test your LDAP. You need to make sure that this is your default port. Um, and this all is pre-configured, so you, you shouldn't be changing any of this unless this right here, uh, if you're using a standard LDP or Active Directory. Uh, if you want to have a, a pin, uh, zero defined as no, uh, one as yes. Um, so as you can see here, these are optional kind of things. I, I personally like said no to those, so I placed a zero. Um, so let's go ahead and just take a look at my script real quick. Um, so once you download the software, you will basically need to make a script. Uh, this is how the most efficient way that you can do this. Otherwise, you could go to the uh, web interface, uh, which is actually pretty neat. They have a web interface um, in their package uh, that you can download. Uh, it's part of the Windows folder, um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that. But main thing is you need to focus on the script and make sure that it works. Um, you also need to add these three lines on the bottom. Um, this is how you identify the, the secret. Uh, for me, I just identified it as root. You'll need this when you download the credential provider. Uh, this is how your, your credential provider is actually going to talk to your server and say, OK, I have this shared secret, and I can exchange data. Um, this is going to be the password. Uh, you'll basically need an account uh, for multi OTP to authenticate to. So I use my administrator account. Uh, and as you can see here is my password. Um, for your LDEP, I actually used uh, a third party software just to test out my LDEP and make sure it works. Uh, you actually need to add your local, um, your LDEP, um, and it will be defined as local basically. and this is what is defined as. This is what my LDP is defined as. Um, so I just made sure that that works, and then I put it in my script. Um, it's very handy, and this was actually suggested on their forms. Uh, so I've used that, and uh, after you download it, um, you create your script, um, you open command prompts, and then you navigate to uh, where where you downloaded the multi OTP folder. Uh, in my case, it's in the Downloads, Multi-OTP, and that's the Windows, uh, just because we're in Windows. And then you simply just paste your script, and that's it. They just authenticated 10 LDEP users. Um, so again, very straightforward, very easy, uh, and uh, it's very efficient. Uh, the only backside is that if you have, a, you know, a thousand people connected to your domain, you're going to have to download the credential provider as well. Um, so that might not be very ideal, um, but you could deploy it through Software Center and you know have it, every individual users configure it. Um, so after that, uh, you basically want to go ahead and download the credential provider. Um, I've actually already have it here, but um, uh, if you if you launch it. Um. Okay, uh, this is what I named it. Uh, this is pointing to the server. 
uh, there is your define church secret that I've talked about right here um, and you press next uh, next they didn't really do any of uh, any additional configuration basically uh, this is the test uh, user and how you want to identify it so one of my active directory users is test one so basically I'll go ahead and just authenticate to test user one um, so if we go here I've already set up my test user, um, but I just want to demonstrate that this is an actual user uh, in my Active Directory. Okay. So uh, this is one of the users. And of course, if you change any of these passwords, you do have to run the script to resynchronize. Uh, in my case, uh, I've used test. So let me go ahead and just authenticate. And this actually won't work unless you test it. Uh, and then my password. And this is a one-time password uh, that's scanned with Google uh, Authenticator, which is just called Authenticator in the App Store. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just make sure it works. And there you go, installed and activated. Uh, and then next, uh, and it basically will say finish. Um, so in this case, you just restart the computer and uh, it's ready. And this is for, again, how I set it up is for all, all users, because I didn't specify a group here. Uh, so I don't have to worry about, okay, I'm adding this user to this group. Unless you have like, you know, it could be very useful if you only want like certain amount of people uh, and you have them in a group, um, that's very useful for sure. And uh, you might be thinking, okay, how did you get the QR code? Uh, basically, it's actually identified in the actual web service. Uh, so this is what the web service looks like. Um, the URL, depending on the ac your Active Directory, um, or you could just put in your loopback address and then that port 8112. Um, and uh, it already has predefined configuration as far as, you know, what the admin password to get in. Um, but after that, you can uh, actually do a few things here. You can add the user. Um, again, I personally didn't, like, use this very much. I mostly just relied on the script. Uh, what I did use, however, is the check a user. Uh, this allowed me to uh, just test my user to make sure it's working. Um, but once you have your user here, uh, you can go ahead and just press the print. And uh, if you scroll down, this is the actual QR code. So if you scan this with your Google Authenticator, it will generate the one-time password. Um, and uh, you have 30 seconds, basically, to enter that password in. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, thanks for watching.